fun. In the next story tonight, we're going to take a look at the new use of computers developing a whole new world. The latest in computers is computer graphics. It's a dimensional animation that is helping out in flight simulation and also in urban planning. And tonight we're going to find out about the exciting developments of this new field from the research group at Ohio State University in computer graphics. What you're looking at is the latest in the field of computer animation. This is not a cartoon drawn by hand, nor a film shot with a camera, but a three-dimensional picture produced and animated by a computer. It's part of the ongoing research done here at the Ohio State Computer Graphics Research Lab in Columbus, where Professor Charles Surrey and his staff are exploring the new and exciting world of computer animation. From its origination in the mid-1960s, computer graphics has been slowly changing the way we live. At the same time, the use of computer animation has been growing as well. The CAT scan, a computer-controlled x-ray, takes a 360-degree scan of a specific area of the body. This information is fed through computers to a console, where a cross-section far more detailed than regular x-rays can be analyzed. In business, computers store and retrieve data regularly through online computers. Most can print data on monitors, and some can print out written copies as well. The use of home computers like these have also skyrocketed. According to Charles Surrey, computer graphics has been changing our way of life. What is happening in this society is that there literally is a computer graphics explosion. It's being used in just so many different ways that the influence is being felt by everyone. But back in 1965, when Professor Surrey, then an art teacher, first started the computer graphics program, the response was, well, small. How many when it started out? Uh, one. You. <laughs> that was it. You have to remember, when I started, which was 15 years ago, computer science departments were barely beginning. I was interested in bringing together uh, a number of disciplines that had common interests in uh, picture making and under the broad umbrella of uh, computer graphics. The course has proven popular because it attracts a variety of students. Well, basically, we have two types of students. One is a student who has a background in art and a minimal background in computers. And then we have uh, other students who are computer science majors. We primarily have graduate students in this particular program. Most animation deals with two dimensions, length and width. Professor Surrey and his staff, through the use of computers, have added a third dimension, depth. Okay, this system is set up so that uh, an average user, user can sit down and describe a three-dimensional object to the computer. Now it is possible not only to see an image, but travel through it. With conventional animation, the artist has to draw all the individual frames. With computer technology, we try to automate as many of the drawing and image construction processes as possible. The process of creating computerized animation begins much like a regular cartoon. A storyboard is made, sketching various stages of the artwork as a kind of roadmap that the artist will use to direct the computer. The artwork is then put on a vector scope, where the image is entered as lines on an axis. The drawings are now no longer an image, but have been converted into a series of numbers. The artwork, now safely tucked away inside the computer, is fed into the computer axis terminal. Now the artist can change and alter the image, adding movement, color, and size. As the artist is giving, given a broader range of tools, then they'll be able to more uniquely express their view of reality. And uh, it's really hard to predict how people will use imagery and how they will communicate with each other, but it certainly is a very powerful and exciting new tool. How is this exciting and powerful tool going to be used? The possibilities are just beginning to be explored. 
The planning of buildings in cities affects thousands of people. And until now, the best city planners could do in attempting to recreate a city was by using scale models and artist renderings. The feel of actually being in a city, though, was difficult to obtain. Through 3D animation, one can create a city of the imagination and view it from all possible angles. This city took over a year to create. Urban planners say that greater detailed models of existing cities can aid in urban renewal. Through 3D animation, new buildings can be viewed in relation to existing surroundings from all angles. Where did the bear land? In education, computer animation is being planned for use in teaching deaf children prepositions and other parts of grammar. On the tightrope. Flight simulation for airline pilots can also be created by computers. Many other areas of business, such as aircraft and automotive design, and landscaping, are ideally suited for 3D animation. Even charts and graphs no longer have to be static. But to the researchers at Ohio State, the future uses of 3D art is not their main concern. To them, the challenge is in perfecting the techniques and shortening the time needed to produce the animation. We're trying very hard to get more control over human movement. Uh, human movement in three dimensions is a very complex problem. We're also trying to understand how to generate the representation of texture. Dr. Frank Crow, a faculty member, created this animation which allows you to see through the vases on the table. This represents the state of the art in computer animation, which combines movement and light into something that is really hard to believe exists only in the program of a computer. The use of computer animation will increase in the future because of its speed, efficiency, and economy. But in the future, this exciting new tool of today will seem commonplace. Children will start looking at computers as if they're typewriters, as if they're pencils. I anticipate that the people will use computer graphics and animation much in the way people are doing pottery or landscape painting. It will become uh, another art activity. Professor Suri also noted that since there are degrees in computer graphics today, in the future there may be degrees in computer animation. John and I will be back in a moment with a look at tomorrow night's PM Magazine.